In this video, I'm going to be comparing the DJI Mic 2 versus the Rode Wireless Pro and why I am choosing the Rode Wireless Pro for me. Despite having much more conveniences if I stayed with the DJI Mic 2, I have the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, which is Bluetooth compatible with the DJI Mic 2. I have the Action 4, which is also Bluetooth compatible with the DJI Mic 2. Yet, I am going to go with the Rode Wireless Pro. And I'll let you know why I'm making such an absurd decision. It wouldn't be my first time making absurd decisions. Bruh. Seems like every year there are updates to audio devices. And should you upgrade or not, I thought that this year there were some major improvements. I mean, the DJI Mic 2 and the Rode Wireless Go 2 Pro, both of those are fantastic systems, don't get me wrong. It's just that it can get kind of expensive if you're upgrading all the time, especially if it's like upgrading marriage. <gasps> but these ones, I think they are at the point that you can make a valid excuse to update your audio devices. The DJI Mic 2 and the Rode Wireless Pro, they both offer, okay, 32-bit recording, cases that charge, they have good range, they have high-quality audio, they have firmware updates from both um, of the manufacturers, which is fantastic. You're going to get more features, you're going to get uh, bug fixes, updates. They're going to support these devices for some time. I, I believe both have magnet type systems that you can just attach to your shirt. And this is especially helpful because I'll talk about the device itself a little bit later. They have built in memory. They have backup audio. Okay, all of those are great. Okay, so those are the common denominators what are different let's go down the list okay the audio quality these are $350 devices or road is a little bit more but it actually has gone down in price to 356 currently the DJI is 350 the audio quality of the road just like the road wireless go 2 compared to the DJI mic 1 the road just seems better. It's it's a clear sounding system. It is what it is. It has better audio quality. I've always considered DJI's audio quality good enough. However, it's just not quite there. Now let's talk about the device itself. Okay, the road has a screw lock system. So that's when you're using the lapel, lapel mic and then you're screwing it on you're not concerned about the 3.5 millimeter jack coming loose. And that has happened to me before. It can happen. It's easy to happen. So because I'm not a professional when it comes to wiring the mics in the body, I know there's certain ways that people twist it around, put body tape and whatnot. You know, I'm just tossing it in my pocket and I'm putting on that 3.5 millimeter. Granted, DJI has that loop around system. I just don't find that all that clean. And on top of that, if I'm yanking on the loop system, you can damage the cable. It's better if it's just like a straight cable, just small thing, okay? Next up is the stop lock recording. As far as I understand, the DJI mic, you can lock the system so that if you're having the mic on a person, they cannot accidentally press a button to stop recording. And uh, the road, when you press a button, if it's automatically recording, you press it, it stops, you're left without a backup. So that's a thing. Granted, you still have the main line going in, but if you lose track, you can unknowingly stop it that said, on the device itself, it'll let you know if you're you're recording the receiver. It'll let you know if you're recording or not. So it's not too big of a deal, but it you have more peace of mind with the DJI Mic 2 in that you cannot accidentally turn off that recording. Okay. Moving on, the battery life. I mean, this may seem like a thing, but uh, and 
it's hard to express this battery life. You have five hours versus seven hours. You know, five hours is a lot of recording time, but it can be a short amount of time. And I mean, in basically any other device, if you're recording for five hours, that's considered great. However, if you're on like a long shoot and it can happen that you just don't want to turn off these mics. And I know that DJ has a system where the mic can automatically turn off. And the reason they have that type of system is because battery life is a concern. Unless you're like tentacle sync that has a 24 hour battery. These have five and seven. And if that auto turn off doesn't work, you can get some battery anxiety. It's just one of these things that always annoyed me with the original DJI mic was that that five hour is it's not that long. It's actually compared to other mics, it's the shortest. I've seen mics, I mean, I have one right here that goes like 13 hours and that's with internal recording. Uh, so the Rode does seven hours. It's just a little bit better, but you know, a little but bit buffer is better than nothing, okay? The lav mics. Um, the Rode lav mics are generally better than DJI. And you can say that about the cables. On the previous uh, DJI mic I had, the cable actually would come loose. And it wasn't that sturdy on the receiver. And I believe DJI took note and they changed the cable. There is a new cable that comes with the DJI system. Rode still uses the same cable they always did because it worked great and it's great quality. Uh, but the lav mic itself, the DJI lav mic, I believe is more basic. However, the Rode mic it has a front facing capsule and I don't like that at all because usually mics, they have a capsule on top. So if you rotate the mic, it doesn't really matter because it's still on top. Now you have a front facing with, what if you have a wind muff on? Okay, if you rotate it this way, then it's towards your body and you might be blocking sound. I don't like that front facing aspect of it. It's not unidirectional, even though my, these lapel mics, they typically are unidirectional, except for the road mic. Okay, moving on, Bluetooth. Wow, that is just such a convenient factor to have Bluetooth automatically paired to one of these devices, the Pocket 3 or the Action 4, and then you're good to go. You don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to have receivers on them. It's just so clean. And these devices have the Bluetooth built in. Um, so that Bluetooth capability is only good for these devices. If you're using larger cameras, well, it can't really work in those scenarios. That said, moving on to the next subject, these devices, despite being small and dinky, they have time code. Well, the DJI Mic 2 doesn't have time code, but the Rode actually does have time code. And on top of that, they can jam sync signal into these devices. So when you're working with time code, it's, it's basically kind of like a timestamp if you want to think about it. And so if you track all your your time code, then you can match them later on when you do a multicam sync. It is just a lot easier. Sometimes you're just filming really far away, but with two cameras and it's going to be impossible to get the time to sync. So you use time code and it's some high precision type of clock. The other alternative with out working time code is just to have a clap, right? You have a clap so that you could sync your audio in post because you see that high spike in the sound and you just sync it up. If you have time code, the bare minimum is that, um, let's say if it drifts, because that's what happens with non-accurate time code. By the way, the road is considered a crystal high uh, accuracy time code. So after a full 24 hours, it can only drift like one frame. So it's ridiculously accurate. Time code devices, I mean, they're expensive. If you have ever looked at the tentacle sync or the DOD systems, they can <laughs> add up. To, I mean, they're hundreds of dollars a piece and the road is a receiver 
and the time code device N1. Well, the small downside is that you cannot jam the road receiver with time code. The road receiver can only jam outwards, which is probably okay because if you're working with professional systems, they can input or output. But anyway, so the time code is just getting your footage really close. And what I found out is that these devices, the Pocket 3 and the Action 4, they have time code, but the downside with their time code is that it drifts a lot. And it's all subjective, right? So this thing drifts a lot compared to a Sony system. The Sony cameras, they have time code and up till now, I've just been working with it manually setting time code. So I have three Sony cameras and I can manually set them all to be synced up to each other within you know, the frame of pressing go or, or whatever. It's I can get it close. And after a full week, you know, it can drift and it's gonna be like under a minute off. That's after a full week of drifting. So the time code for Sony is, is pretty good. Uh, the time code for the DJI small cameras is, is not that good. It drifts a lot. I, I believe I'm like hours off of each other at this point. But because these ones, they have a more basic way of resetting time code, I'll reset them and I'll just manually set the Sony's. And the Sony's, it's kind of sad that they, they don't have any mechanism of jam syncing the signal unless you have like a constant audio feed. Anyhow, so you just have to manually do the Sony's unless you have like an FX3 or FX6 that can take uh, the digital jam signal on the first boot. Yeah, it's just a shame that they don't have it. And uh, it's nice that they have it at all because some devices, they don't have time code at all, but it's nice and so when I get the footage inside of Final Cut, you can just toss it in there, line them up. It'll auto line them up. You can just line up by time code and everything's going to be close. It's gonna be like razor close as opposed to like finding out where everything is if you didn't have like a full time code system. Okay, moving on. So the case, okay. The road has a fabric like case or whatnot and the road has a clear advantage here when it comes to the case for a couple of things first off your accessories like the cables and wind muffs you can actually fit it into the primary case if that's all you're going to bring you're going to have a ultra compact setup you can have wind muffs and the cable inside of the case and maybe not mounted on but you can have it all inside of the case well, the DJI is a solid case, not so much. Okay, when it comes to data transfer, this is kind of a big deal because if you have two mics and receiver and you need to do an update, you're going to plug in individually the mic two, each mic two and, and the receiver to update each one. With the Rode, you plug it into the case itself and you can update everything without unplugging each one because the connections are all USB-C the first time you charge them. And so you can pass data. That means that you can pull your audio recording with just one plug. You're plugged into the case and pull it individually without unplugging and then turning on and plugging on each device. It makes the, the road much more usable in that scenario. And lastly, I'll talk about the size. The size is a clear winner for the DJI Mic 2. It is smaller, it is more compact. However, the thing is that with the size, okay, it's it's a winner for the Mic 2, but it's not like the end all be all because there's other mics on the market that are smaller size. So if you're just concerned about the size, because I'll tell you, those mics, they're gonna pull down your shirt. And if you have a blouse, like a lady, it pulls it down a lot because they're like closing in on 30 grams or over 30 grams for the Rode Pro. They do pull down your shirt. They do flop around and the size can get annoying. 
I, I have s some mics that are, are much smaller than the Rhodes and they cost a whole lot less. So, I mean, technically the mic two is better, but realistically, both of these mics are not good when it comes to sides. They're, they're not. It's better than an external pack to record audio, but as in terms of just the device itself sticking to a shirt, they're not good in size. And on top of that, the road is shiny. It is in your face and everybody knows, okay, this person has a road. They're a YouTuber, stay away from them. Road is synonymous with YouTubers. So it can like detract you from a scene. If somebody sees it, everybody recognizes that logo. And why is there a large logo and why is it so shiny? But other than that, it is a win for DJ in that scenario. And so that is the reason why I'm going with the road, despite it not being a clear winner to the DJ. I mean, I would love that it had the Bluetooth that DJ has makes it so convenient for these little devices. But the thing is that when I'm using these little devices as A cameras, they're usually Bs. But if I'm using it as primary A cameras, I'm not even using wireless audio. I'm just keeping this close to me. I'm speaking next to it. You can hear it. That's it. Keeping things simple, especially for like if I'm just traveling or just having a good time. I'm not going to be mounting a mic to that because it's out of place. It's one extra device to charge, one extra device to maintain. Anyhow, that is all I got for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to like, subscribe, share. See you in the next one. Take care.